Yeah, never gets old. All right, guys, sorry about that abrupt ending on the last one. I wanted to show you three things today. Um, one of them is going to be about how you know the prevention and kind of care of the demo that we were doing, how we knew exactly what to demolish. The second is going to be about the insulation and just a little bit about what insulation is for this wine cellar. And the third one is going to be about framing. So when we talk about number one and we talk about the demo on the drywall, you can buy something like this from Home Depot. It has like a little capacitive sensor on the front of it that you can get a good baseline dryness for. And then you can go down and you can see as you drag it down exactly where you know how how wet it gets when you get down to the floor so concrete like is like a natural sponge you could think of so any lumber that's on the floor has to be a ground contact treated uh even yourself you're a little too moist so that's how you can tell how far down the drywall is damaged and then when you talk about the wood you can also change the setting on this to go for wood and you can see the exact uh, moisture of good wood versus bad wood and you'll know what's damaged then. And you can also poke it with a, a sharp metal object to see what's damaged. So this wasn't damaged but anything that's on the ground just like how you saw that this was moist concrete that's natural for it being concrete and anything on the uh, wood that's on the ground has to be a ground contact treated lumber which is kind of treated with something called like a cop copper naphthenate solution or naphthene solution you can if some of it's kind of washed away off the lumber you can spray it back down again if you want or if you're going to install something and you cut a, cut a piece off you can spray the ends of it with something like this called copper green this is a brown color comes in green it's the chemical copper naphthenate so I went ahead and treated cut out all the bad drywall treated any lumber that's bad treated what's going on there I don't know so I treated any lumber that's bad as well as I treated any of these galvanized steel studs. What I did with these is, since they're not wood, I went ahead and I, behind this wall, I scraped out and cleaned out all of the, uh, all of this stuff that's chipped and bad, vacuumed it out to it's really clean and then sprayed it with a really thick coat, a couple coats of a, you know, spray paint can of some rust oleum, rust and primer, kind of inhibitor based stuff. Just this can of spray paint couple cans of that to stop that rust reaction just to kind of do just a little bit and then when I talk about the insulation when you say something like R19 like you see the number here you can get different types of insulation and all of them can be R19 the R19 is the resistance change in temperatures so if it's cold or hot on one side it'll resist that change in temperature so the higher the number the thicker the insulation you can get foam um, you know, rolls of fiberglass, cellulose, different types of insulation, foam board, you can get spray-in insulation. And so there's different types that can all be R19. Here's a little bit of um, spray foam insulation. And so to install this stuff, I just pushed it up the wall because I don't want to take out these walls. And then I tacked it with the construction tape stapler. These tabs kind of unfold and you just tack it to the wall. And then third, I want to talk about framing a little bit. When you plan for an opening, say this is a 20 inch by one foot wide, you want this to at least be an inch wider on each side. So 21 inches by 13 inches at least because you're going to have a half inch, you know, wiggle room to put different types of um, sill plate or different types of little trim pieces on here, as well as gives you a little wiggle room. So you might even go for, you know, two inches if you have bigger stuff to put on here. And then when you talk about the framing, you, you want your wood to sit on top of wood. So you have your cripple stud supporting your sill here. And then you have your jack studs supporting 
your header here, which just kind of looks funny. And then on either side here, you have these things called king studs. They go all the way um, down to the floor. So there's actually three there. And you want to use a lot longer nails than you think. They're going to be like three and a half inches. Use it. I get a couple different boxes of nails because you use them for different lengths. And you get some sinker type ones that have a, like a coating on them that will be listed on the box that help drive them in a little easier and they'll have a little bit of a texture on the head so your hammer doesn't slip. So the different lengths and nails will all be important for different applications, but I'd get 8D or 8 penny nails all the way up to 16D or 16 penny nails. And some screws are good too, screws are always good. So some of the stuff that I'll go over in the next videos is going to be the, I cut these actually from little shims instead of putting a silk right there. Some of the stuff that I'm going to go over in the next videos is going to be these water heaters and how I installed those. I'm going to talk about electrical when I show you how to install electrical boxes, different wiring and what wire to choose. And I'm going to put an electrical box here. And then I'm going to talk about drywall and how to drywall. So the reason why this stuff is pink on just the last or purple on the last ending note is because it's mo moisture and uh, mildew resistant. So it's a little bit heavier. And when you put the drywall down, just make sure you give a little gap on the bottom of the floor. So if you guys are interested in seeing a modified air conditioner into a wine cellar or any of this stuff, Please stick around and give me a little thumbs up. Thanks for watching guys.